November the 20th, we're cooking. Oh, yeah, November the 20th, the uh, church will be cooking on Wednesday. I said that on Wednesday over at uh, Bowling Park, Mark Park, what we call it, the little there. 
sister that's going to have back surgery Tuesday, so please remember her. Amen. Let's remember that. And it's good to see Tina back with us. She had a catch in her lip, I reckon. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, hip, hip. Hip, hip. Yeah. <laughs> so we will keep her in our prayers today. Amen. Healthy because the catch wasn't in her lip, it was in her hip. She was hoping it was in, in, yeah. in my lip. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Continue to remember our family, and then on top of everything else, our niece was diagnosed with MS with lesions on the brain, so she's in the hospital getting strong anabolic or strong steroids right now.
become strong with Christian for you, dear Heavenly Father. If there's someone lost here this morning, dear Lord, we just pray that you would touch that heart and convict it in such a way, dear Heavenly Father, that they can no longer deny it, that they'd be willing to give their life over to you this morning, dear Lord. And we just lift up these prayer requests that we've heard here this morning for you know each and every need, dear Heavenly Father. And we don't come just asking amends, dear Heavenly Father, but we know that you're that great physician, and you're that great healer, and you're that great comforter, dear Lord. And we just put all these prayer requests in you this morning, dear Heavenly Father, and we just pray that you would work your will on those this morning, dear Lord. And once again, we just pray that you would lead, guide, and direct us as we go through this service, dear Lord. We just pray all this in Jesus' blessed and holy name. Amen. 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 Before you get our song started, I'll go ahead and get this out way because I usually forget. If you got any birthdays coming up this next week? Or did we have any last week? You know what? Oh, I see some fingers pointing back there. Levi. Levi. What about Levi. any others? Levi. <laughs> any other birthday? Well, let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
as we are, we thank you, dear God, Lord, for being the Savior and saving our souls. We thank you just for another day of life, Lord. We just praise you for that, Father. Lord, we pray, dear God, this morning, dear God, Lord, as your word goes out, Lord, we just pray, dear God, that it might touch that hardest heart there, dear God, and Lord, that, that it might uplift somebody this morning, dear God. Lord, we know, dear God, that there's so much trouble and trials in people's hearts and lives today. It seems like there's no joy there, dear Father. Lord, we just pray, God, Lord, that we might look within your word today, dear God, and it might give us a, a little encouragement, dear Father, Lord, and that it might put a smile back on somebody's face, dear God, to, from the troubles and trials of God. Lord, might be able to make them forget about them for a while, dear God, and Lord, Lord, if they just give them to you, they can forget about them for an eternity, Father. Now, Father God in heaven this morning, Lord, I pray, Lord, that, that you would just touch that one that may be here lost this morning, dear God, uh, that salvation would come to their hearts and lives, uh, and God, I just pray, move me out of the way, Lord. Uh, Lord, just move me out of the way, God. The Holy Spirit may be able to work in me and through me in a way that's pleasing unto you, Father. Now, Father God in heaven, forgive us for everything. And if we be careful to give you all praise, honor, and glory for all things in Jesus' name. And amen. 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 We all know the story about David here as he wrote this psalmist. This was after he had, had, uh, uh, had committed adultery with Bathsheba. And, 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 and uh, because of that sin in his heart and life, uh, all of his joy was gone because he was out of the will of God. And I'm here to tell you this morning that uh, that's exactly what happens. Let me tell you, whenever you're going through troubles and trials in your life and you let them things override the joy, you're out of the will of God. Because why? The Bible tells us to bring him what? Every burden. Bring him what? every care. In other words, he tells us to give it to God if you want to have that joy back in your hearts and lives. But as the psalmist went on, he began to realize that where his joy came from. Just like as I said in Nehemiah 18, he says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I'm here to tell you this morning, David had to realize that from the things that he went through. He missed all that joy and laughter in his heart and life. He missed that feeling good and having that peace of heart and mind. And he was from the trials he was facing. In church, I'm here to tell you this morning, if you look in your life, don't you miss it. I mean, don't you miss the joy and peace in your heart and life that you once had? Why don't we let all these troubles and trials come upon us? Why, why, why can't we just give them to God and let Him have them? Why can't we just turn them loose and let God have them this morning? That's what David realized here. He realized simply that if I'm going to have this joy back in my heart and life, there has to be a restoration process. Amen. Amen. What's that do? Well, it restores. You know, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like these old classic vehicles. You know, you look at them, they're all beaten and banged up. They all rusted. I mean, they streak and creak. They don't move at all. Kind of like some of us, amen. We've got rusted. And we just sit around and creak and streak all the time. We can't have to, we can't move because we just, just got used to sitting still. And you know, somebody had a, they saw a little potential in that one day. So they go by and they say, I'd like to have that old vehicle there. If you just let me have it, I'd be lucky to make something good out of it again. At church, I, I'm here to tell you this morning, we just like that old vehicle. It needs to be restored. Jesus has come by this morning and he's looked at you and he says, I've got to have that one. I want to restore them and make them better than they was to start with. And I'm here to tell you this morning, that's exactly what Jesus can do. Whenever you see that individual, take that old vehicle and everybody else might look at it and say, well, there ain't no hope in that. That thing's just a pile of rust. It's just a heap of nothing. That's what the world looks at us like, church. They think we're a pile of rust and a heap of nothing. But I want to tell you, one day the pastor stopped by and he looked and he says, I can make it better than you. And let me tell you, when they take that, they take it, they'll strip her down. In other words, they get rid of all the old rust, all the old tarnish, all the old junk out of its life. That's what God does for us, church. He'll strip us down. He'll take and get rid of all that old junk in our hearts and lives. And I want to tell you, he'll put a new coat of primer. He'll put a new coat of paint. He'll put some, uh, a clear coat on that. He'll go to sand it and he'll buff that thing out and it'll shine like new money. And I want to tell you, when everybody looks at it, it just brings them joy. In church, if you let God do that in your life, when people see you out in public, I want to tell you, they'll see the joy of the Lord in your heart and life and it just makes them feel good too. Amen. 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 
Oh, David, he realized that. He realized that he needed his joy restored in his heart and life. That's why he said there, he said, restore unto me. He says here, the joy of thy. It wasn't, you see what he said there? It wasn't his salvation. It was God's salvation. He said, restore unto me the what? The joy of thy salvation. It wasn't nothing of anything that David done, but it was a fall about God. And he says here, he says, uh, and uphold me with thy free spirit. So what we've got to understand in this, in this morning, that one of these things, I want to tell you, if you'll give it all to God, you'll realize everything's all right. I want to tell you, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 21, listen at this right here. He says in verse 1, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. What? That old and that passed away. Oh, church, that just like, that just like that old man, God tell you, that old has passed away. And what? Behold. You know what means, before the word, behold means, it says pay attention. He said, behold. All things have become new, church. I want to tell you that I'm getting excited. He says here, when the heaven and the earth, the first earth, are passed away, and there was no more sea. And I just saw the holy city of New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride and going for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with me, and he will prevail with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and he may be their God. Listen to this. He says, And hey God, this is what God will do for all those things that you're going through in life. This is what God will do. I want to tell you these things out there. I want to tell you, they make you cry out because it is sorrowful. They'll make you sorrowful just like it says right there. They'll cause us pain. They'll cause us suffering and death. But he says to God, he said, shall wipe away all the tears. Oh, I get that. From their eyes. And there shall be no more death. And neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are all passed away. Oh, the church that are going to society this morning. They's coming today. They's coming today. That when all that old sun's going to be gone out of our lives. And all we're here to say today, that day can be today. That day can be today. Oh, it tells us there, John looked up. He saw that new Jerusalem coming down. He said, uh, as a bride, a door for her husband. I want to tell you something. Uh, David, I'm sure, when your wife, when you was the day you was getting married, uh, I'm sure that you looked and saw your wife walking down the aisle. I want to tell you, I bet you thought, well, God, I didn't think she could get more beautiful than what she is. Uh, but I want to tell you, you could just see the beauty. Yeah, I still see the beauty on my wife, too. I'm going to throw at it because I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but you just look back at it. And I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of times I've done weddings, church, and I'm going to tell you, I've seen that bride come down that aisle. I mean, it just brings a tear to my eye. Because of why? Because of the beauty. Because of the beauty of that ceremony. And I'm here to tell you this morning, church, I, that's what God, He says here. He says He saw that coming down, just like a bride is going for her husband. I, and there's no more pain. No more sorrow, no more sickness, no more crying, no more death. What a day that's going to be, church. Amen. What a day that's going to be. Oh, I want to tell you, Chelsea Tina, when he's gonna, she wanted to get a catch in her, in her lip. <laughs> but let me tell you something, They said all that pain and sorrow is going to be gone. Amen. I know we, we can't begin to imagine that. You know, we go through so much here in this, on this side of eternity. We go through all these things in life. It just brings us torment. It brings us down. Let me tell you, sir, it only does that if you let it. Right. If you let it. When we said that here a few weeks ago, you know, when we began to realize the greatest he that is in me, the he that is in the world, that's when we can really find the joy in our lives. When we let all those things go, when we turn them loose and just give them all to God, then we don't have to worry about them no more. But he says simply this, there's not going to be no more sorrow. Can you just imagine that? I mean, no more sorrow and no more pain. All the Bible tells us in Isaiah 25. It says here, verse 1, in that day shall this song be a song in the land of Judah. We see here there is a song of inciting the, the confidence in God here. He says, we have a strong city. Salvation will God 
appoint for, for laws and bulwarks, uh, O ye the gates, uh, that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth uh, may enter in, thou wilt keep him. Listen to this. Uh, I like this right here. What's this do when you give it all to God and let him take control? It says right here, thou wilt keep him. Uh, what in perfect peace, uh, whose mind is stayed on thee, because why? Uh, because he trusts us in thee. If you want to have the peace that passes all understanding, if you want to have that peace of God in your heart and life, then give it to him. But now he says something right here. He says here that for that I will keep him in perfect peace, right? Whose mind is stayed on thee. Now I don't know all the troubles and trials you're facing in life, but once your mind stays on him, you know, I've always said this, the devil will get you where you're weak is that to me that's no mind. Amen. Amen. Y'all don't have to agree with me on that. <laughs> or unless you're talking about yourself. <laughs> but to me, it's not mine. Yeah. Yeah. See, I mean, you got more people agree to say, I thought yeah. about the, but, but the devil will get in there. And if you ever let him have a toehold in the door of your mind, he'll move right in. That's right. And that's exactly what David's trying to get that, what, he's trying, what Isaiah's trying to get them to realize here. He says, you will be in perfect peace whose what? Mind is stayed on thee. In other words, if you keep your mind and the legs focused on God, then everything's going to be all right. Why? Because he trusts us in thee. And then in verse 4, he says, trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is what? Everlasting strength. Whenever you feel like you just can't go on, whenever you feel like these burdens of this whole world has got you beaten down, and you feel like you can't move another inch, he says right there, simply this, that the God is our strength. In church, we must realize that this morning, that the Lord thy God is our strength. Amen. Amen. Like we said, the joy. You know what that joy does? You know, when you laugh and it makes you forget a lot of things. You focus on all these things here. And you know, we as God's people, we should be the most joyful people there is. Amen? Amen. Amen. I mean, we ought to be joyful in our hearts and lives. Why is it that? Why is that that we should be that way? Should be why? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We realize that if we trust in God, that He's going to take care of all those things. But the devil, all he wants to do is steal that joy from you. How does it look out in society when we as Christians go out with our heads hung low? We just walk around and woe is me. Woe is me. We kind of like old Eeyore. Woe is me. Woe is me. We feel sorry for ourselves. We want everybody else to feel sorry for us. Let me tell you, church, get over it. Get over it and let God have it and everything will be all right. Church, that's what we've got to understand in this morning. Put your trust in God and your confidence in God. Don't put it in man. Don't put it in government. Don't put it in anything. But put it in God Almighty. Right. He'll restore that joy. That's what David realized here. He said, restore it to be the joy of thy salvation. Restore it to be, God, what you've given me. Restore that. Make it you. Make me have that joy one more time. Just like when you first got saved. I mean, you come up over there with a smile, with a smile on your face. Yeah. You come up there happy. Let me tell you, if you're happy and you know it, some kids said, say amen, church. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, say amen, church. Amen. Come on, church. You can amen. do better than that. Say amen. amen. Church, we got we forgot about that. We forgot what it means uh, to be happy in the Lord. Uh, oh, we sit back and we complain so much. You know what happens when you complain, right? You listen to yourself. That's right. Amen. <laughs> you know when you do that constantly, you know what you do? You make yourself feel bad because you listen to it all the time. Amen. But if you quit doing it, say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I, 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 thank you, Jesus, for, for helping me through that trouble. Thank you, Jesus. I, I know everything's going to be all right. I kind of like that old song. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right, church. And when if we put that trust in God, it will be if you give it to him. Amen. He says there's not going to be no more sorrow. There's not going to be no more sickness, no crying. Isaiah chapter 35. Good. Isaiah chapter 35, verse 10 says, And the ransom of the 
Lord shall return and come to Zion. And the church to Psalms uh, and everlasting. Listen to this here. I like this part right here. Everlasting joy. I want to tell you something. What that means? That means it ain't going to run out. It says it's an everlasting joy. It says right there, upon their heads. Uh, he says that they shall obtain uh, joy. Listen to that. In other words, in other words, you're going to keep it. He says they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sigh and what? Shall flee away. All that crying and sorrow is going to be gone. We're just going to be full of joy. Amen. Full of joy. In church, that's what we need to be as God's people. I will tell you, when we come to God's house, we ought to come in here excited about being in God's house. Amen. Amen. I mean, we ought to come in here not coming in and say, gosh, it's only already. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we got we got we got set through one of our old loud sermons for about some people says bless the worship fire. I mean, it might last hour, it might last more. I mean, it's God's time, amen. 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 Well, now we come in, we say, well, yeah. and then we leave out. I mean, just looking, just as sorry as we come in. <laughs> What's wrong with that? I mean, it's just like we grab us up a big handful of old green persimmons before we come to church, go to sucker and all, and we all draw up and pump her up everything, couldn't smile if we wanted to. A church, whenever you come to God's house, we need to be excited. Why is that? Let me tell you, when you're excited about coming to God's house and what God's doing in your life, everybody else is going to get excited too. I mean, Amen. people out here in the world, they're going to get excited too whenever they can see the joy of the Lord in your heart and life. Amen. Oh, church, I believe. My wife, she always pushes me all the time. I don't know when we go stay or something there or get go to another church. I, I like to get there about two hours early. <laughs> the other day, I had to go get Brenda to pick her up at the airport. She'd been visiting the grandkids down in Florida. She said, first she said, I think her flight was going to be at 11, 11 or 11.15 11, Saturday uh, Friday night. So you know what time I left the house? <laughs> Five o'clock. <laughs> I, I, was, I was excited about her coming home. <laughs> you know the irony of all this? He was 30 minutes late picking it up. <laughs> <laughs> God is my witness. He was 30 That's minutes true. late. <laughs> And then Brenda called me, texted me, called me in there. She said, well, they delayed my, flight, delayed my flight for about 30 minutes or 45 minutes. She called me again and said, well, it's going to be 12 or after before I get there. So I went out to Jim and Ryan, sat out there until about 9 o'clock. I went down to the rest area at the state line, sat there for about two hours. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> most of you, now most of you would have probably waited at home. Done it the wrong way. <laughs> I waited about an hour to go get ready to go. So you know, because you know, I like to allow for things. Amen. Of course, I know seven hours might be a lot, a little bit of allowance. <laughs> but I got there at the rest area, and I thought, well, I'm only about 40 minutes from from the national airport. The traffic wasn't bad at all. Thank God. That's one good thing about her getting in that late. And then I, I was like. <coughs> I, I was sitting there waiting. I was just fixing to back out the thing. She called me. She said, worried. I'm about to come out. I said, I ain't there. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I ain't there yet. She said, where I said, well, I'm probably 35, 40 minutes out. What? <laughs> I said, well, you're early. She said, well, we made up time. <laughs> I thought, man, they must have flew. <laughs> <laughs>
Amen. Oh, church. He said there, I like that. He said that said today. He says, and the ransom of the Lord will shall return and come to Zion the songs in their everlasting, in everlasting joy. He said, but the, those Zion there is another word for the church there with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. Uh, and they shall obtain joy and gladness. Uh, and all this sorrow, all this crying, all this whining, all this down and out, uh, them things is going to flee away. Amen. You, God has put a song in your heart. Don't let the devil steal that joy. He, 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 yeah, I know how I, I try to tell people this all the time. The, door, the devil only has as much control over you as you let him. Amen. As you let him. You can either choose to sit down. So many people say, well, I'm just tired of fighting. I, I, I get tired of fighting too, but it don't mean I'm going to give up. I mean, if somebody had me back there cornered, going to be tore out of me. I'm not just going to stand there and say, well, here I am. <laughs> I'm going to like that. That's what God wants us to do. Recognize and realize that the devil can't have no control over you unless you get it to him. Didn't the Bible tell us the book of James was just the devil he'll flee from you? That's what he tells us this morning. And I'm here to tell you that, 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 that if a lot of us ain't putting up no resistance. Just let the devil have control and steal our joy. David recognized and realized. David recognized and realized that, where the, that he, oh, he missed that joy. He missed that peace. He missed that inner peace that only came from serving God. And when he was close to God, he missed all that. So he started crying out. God, I know I've messed up. I know I've sinned a lot against you. I know I've had a lot of trouble and trials in my life. But Lord, I'm coming back to you. Would you just take all this away? Would you just give me that peace and joy that I once had? Would you just restore to me the joy of my salvation? Would you just get me out of the way? Would you just fill me up, Lord? Fill me up. Just one more time. Church, that's what we need in our life. We need to be filled up. We need to be filled up with that everlasting joy, that, that peace that passes all understanding. That's why he told us there in Revelation, he said there's no more sorrow. There's no more crime. There's no more pain. There's no more death. All those things are done away with. All those things that cause us grief and pain and suffering and sorrow, all those things are going to be gone up in heaven. Right. <laughs> Let me tell you something, little church. We can have that real peace in our hearts and lives on this side of eternity, too. If we just don't focus on all those things. That's what the devil gets us. Get us a look at it, this bad part here. Get to look at that. I've got Tickle Squeaky sitting there on FaceTime with one day, a friend of ours. She said, let me show you. Her boyfriend, David, bought him a little truck. He's done wrecked two vehicles. And he bought him a truck. She said, Papa, let me show you David's truck. She can just laugh her. <laughs> she said, look, it's got a big drain hole in it. There's a big hole on the side there, about to have a big rust. She said, watch the console. She lifted it up from off the floor. <laughs> she said, look at this nice stereo. It has a big, one, a big, a big screen stereo in the dash. She pushed on the hill over the dash. <laughs> she was just laughing. <laughs> and she said, well, she, she said, David's going to fix it up. Said he's going to fix it up and make it better. And that's what God wants us to do, church. No, no, no. Keep focusing on all the, the bad stuff. It can be fixed. Amen. But the only one that can fix it is God. Amen. Amen. But you know, we've got to let him fix it. She said, Papa, she said, David wants to know if you can fix his air condition. He said, him and his dad don't know nothing about it. I said, well, yeah. She said, what were you charging? I said, nothing. Nothing. Then she said, how much will the parts cost? I said, I don't know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, there be no charge. And that's what Jesus tells us today. Mm -hmm. You let him fix it, ain't no charge. Amen. Ain't no charge. That's all we got to do, sir. Give it to God. Ain't no charge. All that man's sorrow, 